Hello my crafty loving friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. In this video I'm going to show how I take dump finds, discarded home decor, thrifted treasures and repurpose and upcycle them into beautiful, reloved home decor. So join me as I create, inspire and show how much fun it is to flip these projects. I am a pushover for picture frames even when they're plastic, which this one is. But I found this at the dump free shack, I call it. We have a little free area where people put things that they don't want anymore. And I saw this and I picked it up because I like the shape and I knew that I'd be able to use it for something. Now I got this bird paper. It's a decoupage paper from Zazzle. I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested in checking it out. It's a beautiful paper. You're gonna love it. It's nice and thick, it's got bright colors, and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna take this frame apart, which I've done here, and I'm going to set the glass aside and not use it on this project, but I'm going to paint my frame black. I used Waverly Black ink paint, and I did two coats on that. I gave it a quick seal with my Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer, so that it would stay nice and be easy to clean. And then I grabbed the, just an off-white paint that I had, and I flipped the cardboard over of the picture that was in the original frame print, I guess I should say. And I flipped that over and painted it with two coats of the off-white color. I wanted this picture to be bright. I wanted the colors to pop. And this is going to be a gift to a family member. So I want to make sure that this comes out just perfectly the way I know she would like it. So what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of Mod Podge on the side and getting my paper down just the way I like it and setting it on top of the Mod Podge. Now when I add the Mod Podge, I also will spray it with the spray bottle. This is something new that I've been starting with my decoupage paper. It takes a lot of the wrinkles out. It stretches the fibers in the paper and it just makes it a little bit easier to get it to come really smooth without as many wrinkles. I shouldn't say no wrinkles. This worked really well. Uh, this is nice thick paper. Uh, and so pulling on it and tugging on it and lifting it several times was okay. It didn't rip, it didn't give me a problem. You will see later on, on another one that I did, the paper wasn't quite as thick and it didn't work as well, but I made it work. So just a little bit of paper, just a little bit of water on that paper. You don't want it too, too wet, but you want it wet enough so that it will just kind of stretch a little bit. So I worked slowly in little sections and just kind of flattened it out to get rid of as many of the wrinkles as possible. And this is such good quality paper that it worked out very well. So once that was finished uh, and dried, I went back and just trimmed up the extra paper that was around it. Actually, it was before it was dry that I did that. Um, Cause right there where I'm touching, I actually pulled on my scissors when I was cutting and it peeled a little piece off. I think I was so excited and impatient about getting this done that I just didn't remember the rule is that you should really wait until you your piece is dry before you do any messing with it. So once it was dry, I did sand down the edges and get rid of the extra paper. I added a coat of Mod Podge over the top. cute little lamps with cute little shades on them. I'm not sure where I got them all. I do know one of them I definitely got from Goodwill uh, because it had the tag still. 
the other ones, I believe at least one of them I got from the free shack at the dump and I grabbed it. It might may have been this one here that I'm working on. Uh, it is a little baseball themed lamp, but that won't sell in my booth. It may sell in my booth, but it doesn't go with my with my primitive country style that I have. So I'm going to fix it up and make it look a little differently. So I'm adding some wood glue I think I used on this and I'm getting some of my air dry clay out and just kneading it a little bit and getting it into the shape of the square that I need to cover up the little designs that are on the all the way around this little light. It had baseball glove with baseball, it had uh, just sports related stuff and I wanted to do something different with it. So I thought if I covered it with the clay, then I could do whatever I wanted to around the outside. So I shaped it up, got it all the way I liked it. I took a little bit of water here and just went over it to smooth out any of the wrinkles, uh, make the seams kind of go together a little bit better. And that worked out really well. Cleaned it, it definitely needed some cleaning. It had a bunch of uh, stickers and stuff on it that needed to come off. And I wanted it clean because I'm going to paint the base of it and I wanted it to uh, have a nice surface to for the paint to stick to. Now when I have lamps like this I always clean up the cords. They get nasty and I think sometimes they get forgotten that uh, they need to be wiped down. So this one had one of those little rotary dial things to turn it on and off. So I cleaned that up really well too. Now I have a uh, this shade that came on it, I believe. I may have picked it up separate, but uh, I think it would go really well with it, and it's got green in the stripes. So I'm going to use this DWIL paint. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested. It's a beautiful green color, and I thought this would match the shade really well, so I thought I would just use it uh, on this piece. This is wood paint, but it worked just fine for this. So uh, I did two coats all the way around on this. The clay isn't totally dry. It has a nice coat of hard uh, over the top of it. So I felt that it was okay to go ahead and paint and do what I needed to do with it as long as I didn't push down too hard with it. So I have these little wood laser cutouts I got from Dollar Tree. I have the hearts and the stars and I think I got one with uh, dragonflies and ladybugs and stuff like that but I was thinking I wanted to put a heart over the front of it so I was just kind of trying to figure out which design I liked best so then I grabbed some music paper that I had and ripped it down so that it would fit around the bottom or the base of my little lamp and I cut two pieces and started in the back and added the piece in the back so that when I wrapped the front around it, you couldn't see the seam. And this worked really well. I just ripped the edges to make it look organic and and uh, like it was just a, an old piece that uh, just over the years had ripped. And this worked very well. I just used Mod Podge and added it too and then sealed it all over once it was on where I wanted it with Mod Podge again to give it a good seal and make sure it stayed on and didn't come off. Spanish moss around the base of the little candle and the part where I had painted and I thought that would add a nice touch around it. I added some hot glue and then put that on there. Then I cut off a few pieces of the uh, some greenery that I had so that I could uh, add that to the bottom as well. I thought it would be a nice soft touch added to it. So I did that as well. And then once I had that all done, I went ahead and added my 
little heart with some hot glue over the music paper and I think this came out really cute. I added it all back together, put on, put in my silicone bulb and the shade over the top and made sure that it worked and this piece is done. Now the other two lamps that I had, I didn't really want to do anything special with them as far as decorating. I thought they were uh, just perfect the way they were. So all I did was take them apart and take off any unwanted stickers and clean them up so that they were nice and clean and had uh, everything just, just looking brand new with them. So I just added, uh, just undid the cords again. I like to make sure the cords are clean. Went through and cleaned them both up, put them back together and made sure that they both worked and they did. One of them I had to add a silicone bulb, which is fine, I keep extra around. And uh, the other one had one already. And these I think are great little lamps and I didn't need to do, I don't think anything to them. And I think they will sell just fine in my booth. This is definitely gonna be a unique marriage of repurposed items. This was a lampshade given to me by my mother. It had glass in it and it must have broken at some point. So I also got this plate. I believe I got this at Goodwill and I love all the crazing all over it. And this little shade here went to some kind of a oil lamp or a lamp and I picked it up at the free shack or at the dump and uh, brought it home thinking I could use it on something. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to start this is take these little tabs off that held the glass in to the shade. I'm gonna just use my little pliers here and snap those off. It does leave a little bit of a burr or a little bit of metal there that's sharp. So you will see in a little bit uh, once I get all of these off, I'm gonna take just a little bit of sandpaper and sand them down so they're not so sharp. They'll still be a little bit of bumps, but uh, they'll be sanded down pretty well. So you won't have to worry about cutting yourself or snagging anything on those. I wanted to add a cute little topper on the top and fill in that hole. And I have these little wooden pieces that I've had in my stash forever and it fit perfectly down inside that hole. So I'm just using some E6000 and some hot glue to put those in or to put that in uh, to give my my little shade or cloche now a little topper and I think that looks so cute the next thing I'm going to do is take some black paint and just paint my metal all black I want this to all match so I uh, did a couple coats on there kind of like one full coat and then touch up coats or coat after uh, so it, it took a few just to get rid of um, all the gold but then I went back and sanded it down and got the gold to come back through so I was very meticulous about getting that gold but then I turned around and distressed it uh, which I should have known I would do because that's what I do <laughs> but anyway um, yeah I just went all the way around and just made sure that I got it covered the best that I could and I cleaned up my little base and did a nice uh, two coats on that of the black paint as well. Once those coats dried, I went back with a damp paper towel and distressed back the ridges. As you can see there, this is very wavy and got a lot of ridges on it. And I wanted to bring back that really awesome uh, bronzy, gold, old look, but I didn't want the whole thing to be that color. Again, I wanted this 
uh, cloche to match. And this was going to be the base of my cloche. So I wanted it to have an, some nice character. So I distressed that uh, on all those little edges. So here, after painting this up so that it had every piece of gold gone from it, I uh, went back and distressed it and brought back a bunch of that gold. But I think it looks great and it looks uh, good with the base and they both match together. Now I'm taking my gold, my antique gold rub and buff and I'm giving that little topper a little bit of gold as well because that was a piece of wood that was raw. I don't have that to distress back uh, into gold color. So I'm just gonna use that rub and buff and then I just kind of go around and touch up little places where I want to add it. And I think this was a nice addition to uh, my, little, my little cloche and base. So this is the topper or the plate that I'm gonna use. And I just add some E6000 to the base that I just painted up and a little bit of hot glue. This is such a unique piece and it's taken some different and weird uh, objects and putting them together and I hope it inspires you to find some things in your stash or out, in, out and about and gives you some ideas on things that you can use like this. This is a wood plate holder that I got from Goodwill for $3. Oh my gosh, I don't know, last year or the year before, I've had it in my stash for quite a while and wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it, but I was going through my decoupage paper and found one that I thought would fit really nicely. And uh, so it's this one right here. Can't remember where I got this. I'm not sure if it was Zazzle. Uh, I've bought from Zazzle. I bought from Etsy. I brought from Jamie Ray Vintage. So I will take a look around and see if I can figure out where. And I'll add a link down in the description if I can find out where I got this paper. It is a little different. It's a lot lighter. It's more uh, thin tissue paper type compared to some of the Zazzle paper that you can buy that's a lot thicker and easier to work with. This is thin and it doesn't like to get wet and rips very easily. Just a little hint for later on. Um, <laughs> so all I did was trim it down to what I wanted. I didn't want the writing on it. It wasn't going to fit anyway. So I just trimmed it all down so that it would just be the sheep and the little scroll work that it had on it. Then I went around with my black paint around the edges and made sure that I went up on the flat part where I am going to put my decoupage paper. I want to, if it rips or anything like that around the edges, I want it to be able to have the black underneath and not the, the wood color underneath. I did not bother to paint the wood on top uh, because this is going to be a primitive shelf. So I'm going to leave it dark and moody and just go with it that way. Now, as you saw earlier, I popped off those little, uh, little knobs that were on there. These are so cute and they will be great to, once you hang this on the wall, to hang some of your little goodies that you have that would look so cute. So I just stuck them in this paper plate, made a hole and put them in there, made it a little bit easier to, to paint them and to get them to dry. And so I just did that and then set them aside so they will dry. So now I'm going to add my Mod Podge over the very front of this shelf. And then I'm going to add my decoupage paper. Now what happened here is I added too much water, way too much water. My spray bottle was acting up and it didn't want to spray and I was shaking it and getting it to, you know, whatever I could to make it work and boy did it work once it started. And that's not really what, uh, what I wanted. <laughs> I mean, I wanted it to work, but not that good. 
Um, so, and then I wanted to line up these grain sack stripes on each side so that they matched up just right on each side of my shelf. They were just the right, uh, you know, width from the edges. And so I had to pick this up several times to get this to just to fit on there the way I wanted it to and I lifted it up one too many times and pulled on it and tugged on it and as you can see by my right hand the up in that corner it ripped on me and uh, so I'm just trying to save it a little bit and put it back down I just got this way too wet as you can see it's just soaked and um, so I was kind of bummed that it ripped but again it's a primitive piece it's gonna all work out in the end, FYI. It's, I, I think this is my favorite out of everything that I've done today. I really absolutely love this shelf. Um, and it, it, it's just so cute. I just, just love it. Uh, anyway, so this basically, I just finished putting on my Mod Podge, sprayed a little water, very little water, and put this all down and made sure that it was down. It actually, there weren't very many wrinkles in it. It actually ended up very flat. The only part that I had the problem was with up that upper right corner of my little shelf. So I uh, waited for it to dry mostly. It's a little bit wet in the middle. Um, and then I trimmed up the edges. I, after I got the excess paper off, I went back with my sandpaper and sanded the edges to blend it in a little bit more. Some of the paper stuck where I didn't want it, so I just used the sandpaper to get it off. I was going to uh, distress it anyway, so I just went along the edges and distressed, made it look old, made it look like it'd been around and kind of tossed around and dinged and um, just gave it a nice... Uh, vintage look. Now I'm going to address the part here where I ripped it a little bit. I just added a little bit of black paint. Uh, it doesn't take care of it totally, but it definitely uh, helps give it a, a more finished look on that spot. It, it's doesn't. not in your face as it was, uh, but it's also primitive. So if it's got rips and tears, it's part of the part of the whole glamour of having primitive decor. Uh, I took my antique wax and I am waxing the all the black. I'm doing the whole thing. I did the black and also the front of the paper. I love how this looks, how vintage this looks. It came out so good. It was a little bit dark, so I took some uh, a wet paper towel and I went over the picture, just the sheet picture, and um, wanted to kind of toned back some of the darkness on that and I think that worked really well. Just brought back some of that antique wax, took it off and still left a nice dark picture there. So now I'm just doing a little X in all of my holes so that I can put my my little uh, knobs back in. Those I also did the wax on them, the antique wax. And of course, because I used Waverly black paint, and it's clay based. Uh, when I got it wet, they distressed on their own, so I did not have to do anything there. Uh, got those all in, added some glue so that they would stay, and just a little extra tapping to make sure they were in just right. And this piece is done. hope you liked my projects today let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite I'm gonna tell you right now the sheep shelf say that three times fast is my favorite I really love it I think it came out just the right primitive touch and I'm absolutely thrilled with it but I do like all of the projects so let me know what your favorite is down in the comments don't forget, if you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. If you want more Repurpose My Way ideas, check out this next video on the screen. I know you're going to find some inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.